Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Pavel, as Grayson just introduced me. Um, I am the Chief Operating Officer at uh, MoneyPoint, which is an African financial services company. Um, our theme today uh, is catalysts of change, and the change that MoneyPoint and I focus on relentlessly is uh, financial inclusion. What exactly is that? Um, the World Bank has a definition. Uh, according to the World Bank, financial inclusion means that individuals and businesses have access to useful and affordable financial products and services that meet their needs. Uh, that includes transactions, payments, savings, credit, uh, all delivered in a responsible and sustainable way. Now, that is a perfectly correct definition. Um, I think it doesn't quite convey why financial inclusion is so critically important. Um, so let me try to paint a richer picture for you. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say that most likely everybody in this room today is financially included. Uh, take transactions and payments, for instance. When you need to pay for something, you wave your phone, a plastic card, provide a card number. Uh, you might use uh, an app like a Venmo or a Cash App, but no matter how you do it, this, those transactions are instantaneous, they're reliable. Um, it works no matter whether you're buying something at the corner store here or uh, on the other side of the country, online, um, in many places abroad. Uh, most of us don't really spend much time thinking that, uh, you know, how that happens or, or how incredible it is that that actually works. Um, we're barely aware that we're participating in a digital payment system or, or in other words, that we are included in it. Uh, now, if you happen to be using physical cash still, um, when you need to get your hands on some, you probably just walk down to the bank or find an ATM and um, it's also kind of a non-event. You just get whatever you need from your bank account, which incidentally is a financial product that a number uh, with a number of really, really terrific features uh, that most of us have, again, just come to take pretty much for granted. Um, it's worth reflecting on those benefits for a minute. First, it's much safer to keep your money in a bank account than under the proverbial mattress. Um, it significantly lowers the risk of theft. Um, second, um, there's this thing called inflation. If you keep money under your mattress, it's actually losing its buying power over time. But if you put it in, a, in an interest-bearing account, um, some of the losses offset are mitigated, uh, at least as you earn interest. Um, uh, third, um, you need something like a bank account to make all of those uh, digital payments instantaneously. And even more importantly, you need something like a bank account for transactions in the other direction to receive funds. So, uh, for example, when you work, if you have a bank account, your employer can just deposit your wages directly and instantly and securely. You don't have to show up in person to get paid. Um, your pay just shows up. Um, in the United States, over 95% of households have a bank account. Overwhelmingly, people are included in the banking system. Um, in the definition of inclusion, the World Bank also mentioned credit. Uh, mentions credit. Uh, why does that matter? Uh, there are many situations where individuals and businesses need to borrow money. You might need to borrow to buy a car that you would use to drive to a better paying job. Um, the loan could enable you to uh, improve your earning power. Uh, if you're a retail business that's facing high demand, you might borrow money to buy more inventory. More inventory means you sell more, making more profit. In essence, access to credit fuels either individual or business growth. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an incredibly powerful force. And in order to extend credit, um, lenders need to assess the odds that the borrower will pay them back. Again, in the United States, the system is exceptionally well developed. Uh, since almost ever, everyone has a bank account, banks already know a lot about their customers, um, how much money they make, how much they spend, uh, how stable their finances are. So they can extend credit. Um, and then each customer's repayment history in that, of the credit is then shared with specialized credit rating agencies who track close to 90% of, of, of Americans which then enables other lenders to make further instant decisions about credit worthiness. And, and the resulting degree of consumer convenience of this is, is truly stunning. So you could walk into a car dealership, share a few personal details like your social security number and your address, uh, and a few minutes later drive away, drive away in a brand new car, having borrowed the full cost of that car without paying the dealer in a moment anything at all. Um, again, it's all possible because most people in the US are included in the financial system. Now, let me paint a stark contrast for you um, of the corresponding reality in Nigeria, uh, the country where my company MoneyPoint operates. 
So as you probably know, uh, Nigeria is a West African country close to the equator. Uh, to give you a sense of its size, it's about uh, one third larger in land mass uh, than the state of Texas. So it's pretty big. Um, Texas has about 30 million people. Nigeria is Africa's most populous country with over 220 million. It's actually the sixth largest in the world. Nigeria is also very poor. Uh, about 40% of Nigerians live below the poverty line, again, using the World Bank definition of uh, living on less than $1.90 per day. Uh, physical security is a major issue in Nigeria. Uh, property theft, burglary is very common. Um, kidnappings for ransom are a major concern in many parts of the country. Uh, the country lacks infrastructure that limits its economic activity. Uh, there's not enough uh, roads, uh, let alone paved roads. Um, nearly 45% of Nigerians do not have access to electricity. Those who do um, uh, experience incredibly unreliable service. There are outages that uh, take, you know, take electricity offline for hours at a time. It's not surprising, therefore, that financial services are not universally available in Nigeria. Um, again, to just give you a sense by comparing it to Texas, um, in Texas, there are roughly 30 branches uh, for 100,000 adults. In Nigeria, there are roughly four. In the US, there are roughly 200 ATMs for every 100,000 adults. In Nigeria, there are about 20. So in other words, per adult, Nigeria has one-tenth the financial services infrastructure uh, that we do. So this results in more than half of Nigerians uh, being excluded from the financial system um, and the economy being heavily dependent on cash. And the consequences of this go well beyond just not being able to you know, tap to pay at the corner store. Uh, from a payments perspective, it means that buyers and sellers have to handle cash, often in fairly large amounts. Uh, the cash has to be counted with every transaction, uh, which is slow, leads to errors. The bills could be counterfeit. The cash itself could be stolen. Um, shoppers need to get their hands on cash when they need to go and buy something, which, by the way, since there are no ATMs around, it's not that easy. And then the merchants might have a surplus of cash and nowhere to deposit it, which then again creates a security risk. Um, naturally, if you're financially excluded in this way, uh, you're not buying anything online. That's out of the question. And then if you wanted to send money, for example, to a family member across the country, well, that's fairly difficult, too. Um, without a bank account, uh, it's harder to get paid for the work you do. So you have to show up to get the cash when you're getting your wages. And then once you've collected that cash, you have to worry about physical security again and um, be really vigilant. Naturally, um, no bank account, no savings, no interest. Um, and then there's the access to credit part of it. Well, when you're financially excluded, uh, borrowing is either difficult or basically just outright impossible. Um, if you are living a cash-based life, uh, whether as an individual or as a business, lenders have no way of discerning how likely you are to repay the loan, any loan that they would make to you, so basically they just don't lend. So this means that you have no way to borrow to pay for a course that would improve your job skills or a new set of tools that might make you more productive. Or, or if you're a merchant, uh, to buy the inventory that you might need to sell more and grow your business. Um, the lack of credit basically chokes economic growth. So um, there's maybe one more consequence of financial inclusion that's worth mentioning. Um, and that is that in a cash-based economy with uh, no documentation of any transactions, uh, it's very difficult for the government to collect any taxes. And since taxes are what pays for public infrastructure and services, this kind of results in a developmental rut because no infrastructure limits access to financial services. No fi financial services means you're cash-based. And an informal cash-based economy means that you don't have tax revenue, which would then be invested in the infrastructure. So with such a daunting set of challenges, uh, does it mean that you know, most Nigerians are doomed to be excluded from access to modern financial services? Well, at MoneyPoint, uh, we have built an entire company uh, on the premise that this is categorically not the case. Um, and I'd, I'd like to share that with you uh, in, in, in a little bit of detail. So as far back as 2012, uh, the Nigerian government uh, declared financial inclusion a key point in na of national policy, um, seeking to evolve away from this cash-based economy to make uh, access to digital payment services uh, uh, available to at least 70% of the population by 2020. 
Uh, but the lack of branches and ATMs persisted as a major barrier. So in 2018, they came up with another interesting solution. Uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria introduced an initiative authorizing and supporting what's officially called um, agency banking. Uh, I like to call it the human ATM network. So equipped with these point of sale terminals, the kind that you would use at a restaurant to pay with a credit card, uh, you now have about a, one and a half million of these banking agents all across Nigeria who act as human ATMs. Typically they sit on an umbrella on a street corner or on the side of a street and they allow customers to come to them and they will do withdrawals and deposits. People can pay bills, even pay taxes. And the service they provide is remarkably swift and resilient. Uh, partially thanks to a, a, a nationwide uh, real-time transaction clearing system that's a key part of the infrastructure, but also because, like cell phones, these terminals operate on batteries, so they're not susceptible to the rolling blackouts, so you take one problem off the table. Um, the transactions are processed on cellular networks, which have also been built out to be quite, uh, quite comprehensive in coverage, so you don't need landline phones, internet connections with cables or anything like that. Those, those basically don't exist outside of the cities. But now in every corner, you can now have this terminal that works. And then once the working day is done, the human ATM packs up their terminal, puts it in the bag, folds the umbrella, and there's no branch, no ATM that you need to secure or guard, eliminating a lot of the security concerns. So without a doubt, the introduction of his agency banking has led to an extraordinary improvement in access to financial services. And MoneyPoint's con contribution to this uh, was vastly improving the reliability of these terminals, which initially weren't working very well, and, and through our understanding of kind of the payments infrastructure and, and, and technical expertise, uh, we've been able to offer a better service that's allowed us to be the dominant provider uh, in the country. And the uh, banking agents um, have now started to um, encourage so many more Nigerians to keep money in digital bank accounts because now they've become much more useful and initially uh, the customers would go to the banking agents, withdraw the cash, and then go to the market to shop around. Now increasingly, the merchants have said, well, hang on a second, we can actually just get our own terminals. And that has driven the adoption of digital payments even further and perpetuates this, this very virtuous cycle. So the adoption uh, by merchants also was greatly accelerated by a very brief cash shortage earlier uh, in, in 2020, uh, 2023. Um, and it's just absolutely taken off. Now, this adoption of digital payments by the merchants is another revolutionary step because now, by transacting digitally, they are generating data that a company like MoneyPoint can collect that allows us to assess their credit worthiness. And all of a sudden, because this is coming off the cash-based economy into the digital, digital sphere, we are now beginning to be able to lend to them creating access to capital, which, as I mentioned to you before, is like oxygen for growth. It's absolutely, absolutely incredible how these things build on each other. So today, um, over 72 million unique cards are used on MoneyPoint terminals um, uh, throughout the whole of Nigeria. Um, we, we power uh, one and a half million businesses to accept uh, digital payments. We are launching this lending program. We have launched consumer banking to bring in the modern digital banking service to, 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 them, to the masses. And um, the progress uh, on, on, on this very real, very high impact change really is happening every day. Um, the financial inclusion revolution in Nigeria is a consequence of several key elements coming together. It's not just money point showing up. From a policy perspective, the Nigerian government's emphasis on commitment to inclusion has played a critical role, uh, not just setting the objectives for inclusion and introducing this banking model, this agency banking model, uh, but the government has explicitly supported financial technology and financial services innovation um, with, uh, with regulations that kind of balanced creativity with prudent risk taking and, and prudent risk management. Um, the government's uh, introduced biometric uh, identification, which also has been revolutionary because Financial transactions require trust, and it is incomparably easier to deliver these uh, when, uh, as a service provider, you can be confident that each party in the transaction is who they say that they are. And then there is uh, additional infrastructure elements here, like the uh, real-time payment clearing system I mentioned, 
the cellular data network, and actually cloud-based infrastructure. Because now financial services, technolo financial, financial technology uh, innovators like Money Point can deliver these services uh, to every corner of the country without having to worry about connectivity or about having to build uh, reliable and secure data centers on shore. So these critical ingredients kind of came together, but I don't think that they were sufficient. I think that the real change had to be catalyzed uh, by the entrepreneurial insight and the drive of Money Point's co-founders, uh, these two gentlemen, Tosin and Yolarunda and Felix Ike, and then the team of nearly 2,000 people that have built around them. Others may have spotted this opportunity to build a business that would propel financial inclusion in Nigeria, but this team have delivered it and continue to deliver it with, with incredible grit, determination, and just technical depth and understanding. Um, it's hard, and they're getting it done. So I'm privileged to be a part of this journey. Um, I know that there is a long road ahead of, for us as a company, and ultimately as a vehicle for delivering financial inclusion um, in Nigeria and beyond. Thank you.